How's everybody doing? We should start in just a few minutes. coming out tonight it's Sunday night it's funny how this is becoming like the fun stuff to do on Sunday nights is sit inside <laughs> Did you guys have a good show yeah the tonight's the last night I think this is Pretty much the end right there, you know. I'm gonna start turning the switches off and everything. Appreciate you guys hanging out with me as kind of like a final hurrah. Yeah, Mondays. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yep. My kids go to school tomorrow, but they're all doing school from home, so kind of hilarious they wake up early they do everything like they're gonna go to school and then they just move to the dining room table and start going to school it's so weird all right we'll get started in about two three minutes Let everybody kind of get over here and then but if anybody's sitting looking at me um there, I don't know if you've already had a chance, but if you go, if you want to be working alongside with what uh, I'm working on tonight, all the brushes and the start PSD file of the um, the design we're going to be focused on tonight are over on Gumroad for free. You can download them if you want to grab them. All the links are in the bottom of the in the description of the YouTube stream, so feel free to grab that stuff. It's all six of these brushes and and yeah, the PSD. Just turned 11. So, get started pretty quick here. Just give everybody a few more minutes just to get in, or not a few more minutes, like half a minute to get over here. Um, but yeah, tonight I was gonna do this Alien Explorer. Again, this file is, uh, hey, from Florida. Um, this file is over on Gumroad, so if you want to draw on it, you want to, you know, kind of go through the process, and all these brushes that I'm going to be using tonight are also available on Gumroad, so, you know, you guys can do everything that I'm going to do tonight. Um, all, everything's uh, available for download, so. Cool. Yep, last panel of the expo. Hopefully you guys have learned a lot this weekend. Um, I watched a few things today. It was, it was awesome. All right, so I'm channel's name. If you look up Lost Bear Studios on YouTube, hopefully that little blue bear is the only thing that'll show up, um, and then all the all the links are below the live stream. And then even after we're live streamed, that video will automatically get put up in the feed and uh, not in the feed in the on the channel, and the links will stay, and then you can just get them whenever you want so there's no rush they're not going away yeah my pleasure you guys I'm, I'm glad everyone's tuning in all right yeah I have a hard time when these shows end to be Joe if you go um, yeah I mean even even when they're not in person when they're over it's like now that 
I kind of feel like the shows are like what we should be doing every day. <laughs> so it's always kind of a bummer to have to go back to the reality of life. So on Friday night, I did an organic character. And then on um, Saturday night, I did a mech. And tonight, I thought I'd kind of mix the two together and do kind of like this alien uh, in a spacesuit thing. So, um, oh, who did I like the most? Uh, I have a, I have this thing for James Gurney, James Gurney's videos there, and I watched him uh, do a couple of paintings today, and he's he's hilarious, he's awesome. So, um, oh, the lightbox link wasn't working. They were supposed to have fixed that, but um, hopefully everybody finds their way over here. No big deal. We're gonna draw it anyway. It's all gonna be recorded. All right, so. Let's get started. So on this character, um, the hardest thing for me is actually going to get this arc of his glass dome correct. Uh, once I get that done, um, I could just only use, you know, I could lay out a tool or something like that. But um, what I like to do is just kind of just kind of get my, my shoulder going. And you'll see me probably make six or seven marks before I'm, I'm happy with one. If I hit it first try, I can promise you that's not going to happen, but just kind of keep making marks until I'm happy with them. I don't think it, if anybody here has ever tried to hit a circle first try, yeah, that one's not bad. So I always hit the, the mark that I can't hit easily first. And then I'm going to start working on some of the stuff that I'm a bit more confident on. Yeah, Gurney's amazing. He's an he's he's amazing, and he's um he's he's the right kind of nuts. He he just challenges himself in ways that like I think most of us are probably a little too afraid to go after. All right, so I'm gonna do um, a little bit of ruler work tonight. So if you guys aren't familiar, if you guys haven't been um, been here for the um, last couple nights, I'm gonna be using Clip Studios. Um, special ruler sets. They have some straight rulers, some symmetries, perspective, but tonight I think the most I'm going to use is the concentric ring tool. So I have a special ruler. It's set to concentric ring and then you just basically draw it out um, and then kind of figure out a general placement. And This is your um, this line here. Once you kind of grab these handles you can adjust the perspective line of like which way the ellipse or circle is going to slide across. So once once you have that line placed, you can kind of just track across it. So I'm going to kind of get that placed. And yeah, I'm going to look up at the chat as often as possible. And I will answer as many questions as I can. And then at the end, um, if I missed your question, definitely hit me up with it again. And we'll see if we can't get anything answered that I didn't answer or I missed. Uh, I'm not a very good moderator, but I'll do my best. So you can see how, like when I'm using this ruler tool, the pen just sort of locks to it. And as long as this little icon is lit up, or if you have multiple tools, which you can have multiple um, tools down at the same time, in case you ever need to go back to a certain area, um, you can just turn it off by hitting this little diamond and it turns the um, the ruler green and that that basically just turns it off and then when it's purple it's live and I think you can even change those colors and that's kind of the beauty of clip is they they make everything somewhat editable customizable so I just play with it this is where I, I really have a lot of fun because there's not a really easy way to screw this up you just and the nice thing about the, the ruler is kind of grabbing your um, your pen is that you can you can still get nice thick to thins just the way that you like to have them. And you sort of build up those forms. And it just it really comes together pretty quick. And 
advice on daily character designing. Yeah, we can talk about we can talk about a little bit of theory while I'm drawing. Um, I have my own. You get in, you know, I have I have games I play. I talk about it a lot, um, but I, I I'm really uh, becoming more and more aware of my surroundings, the people that are around me, all the time. I think um, hopefully I'm not getting creepy, but um, I just. I really, really pay attention to how people are acting, what people are saying, how they're saying it, um, those little stories that are kind of unfolding in front of you. And they're not always, you know, like America's Funniest Home Video, $10,000 funny, but they're always a little bit odd, you know? People are just odd in general. We're all really strange. So um, I, I really pay attention to everybody, and then the the... the the trick is to then take those and bring them home and find ways to take a, a unique perspective on telling those stories. Sometimes that means mashing it up with something that didn't happen that day. Mashing it up with something that's sitting next to you like a microphone or you know something that you that you found on your walk or something like that. And just having those two things go together in a combination that they've never really been together before, it, it sometimes gives you a really unique idea. Sometimes it's absolute garbage. You just gotta be willing to take the hits. Yeah, this is Clip Studio Paint. Um, I'm just I'm using that because I really I really like their ruler tools, and um, I love their brush engine but I don't really have a strong preference for this over a lot of other drawing programs. I like to use all kinds of drawing programs. Just right now, this is the one that's making my life the easiest. So this is the one I'm using. Do you work from home? Also, do you think working from home will become the new norm? I work from home. Ironically, um, I worked in an office. I worked at Insomniac Games for uh, 17 years, and I recently left there to go out on my own and do my own thing. And um, that was back over just just over a year ago. And um, <laughs> I was terrified about working at home because I hadn't done it in so long. I mean, I, I really do like working in my office. I like the privacy of it. Um, and I like the freedom of it. And then, you know, the, everything hit the fan and it just got so uh, much more common for everybody to be working at home that, you know, it was, I'll say it was a silver lining, but I, I wouldn't, you know, I would never ask for it. But um, <laughs> I have all the technology, all the, all, all the commonality of being able to work at home, just, you know, becoming the new norm. Um, Certainly not the best time to go start your own business, but it, you know, working from home. But at the same time, all the technology caught up really fast, and taking meetings on the phone, you know, when you used to say, "Hey, I'm, I work from home. Can I take a? Can we do this as a video chat?" People would not always want to do that. They'd want to do it in person or something. And now it's it's a no-brainer. So I think it's for anybody who is thinking about working at home, it has paved the way to make that a lot easier. I'm working on a sci-fi webtoon, but it's hard creating new creatures. Yeah, yeah, uh, I think you, you got a couple things up against you, and I, and I face it all the time, is um, coming up with new creatures is, is tricky because you've seen a lot of stuff. And I can tell you, it's painful to say, but I've had to stop watching a lot of shows. And, um, I've had to stop watching shows. I've had to stop watching every movie. I've had to stop. Like I used to, have to do this with games as well. Like when we were work, um, working on Ratchet and Clank and things like that. I I had to really stop looking at other games. I had to I had to very consciously turn them away and not look at them because you can't help but be influenced in them. And the only ideas that you can muster are ideas that have already been done. 
Now, not everybody is like that, but that definitely affected me. And uh, I didn't like it, but I, I really had to. It was almost like going on a diet. I had to just say, like, all right, I have to just focus on looking at things that are unique in my world, playing that little game that we just talked about, and not really try and solve problems the way people had solved problems before. Nothing, nothing feels worse than when you feel like you've got a brand new idea and then you find someone who did it five years before that. What triggered, inspired you to step out on your own after such a long time at Insomniac? You basically just answered the question. I spent a really, really long time at Insomniac. Um, There's just other things that I want to do. You know, it's been it's been such a joy to be able to say that I've worked on all these huge successful projects, and the team members are some of my. You know, it was probably the hardest thing because they're just so talented. Uh, the company really takes care of everybody. Nothing bad to say about it, um, but for me personally, I think if you if you're being honest with yourself, there's a time, you know, when you're getting started as an artist, and this is even a lot of times before um, going to college and things like that. You know, you want to do your own ideas, and there comes a t there comes a moment when you realize you're just not going to have enough time to get all those ideas done. So I took the shot, and it's scary but I'm having a great time. Um, got a very, very supportive family. Uh, we, we were very careful, and now we're just gonna give it a shot. All right, so I haven't seen you since last Lightbox. Yeah, I can't wait to get back to Lightbox. Thank you, Fjord, that would be, it'd be awesome to be doing this with all of you guys live instead of at home. Or even if it was at home, it would be my home. We'd have a campfire. I'd sit out there with an iPad. And we'd all chat. It'd be awesome. But not this year, right? Not this year. How do you cope with the pressure of making your current or next drawing as amazing as your last one? Oh, it's the worst. <laughs> How do I cope with it? Um, uh, that is, yeah, that's the worst is the fact that if, the worst is when you actually pull off a, real, a piece that you're proud of. <laughs> it's such a double-edged sword because if you're pulling off junk and you're not proud of it, then you can only go up from there. But if you pull off a really good piece, then all of a sudden that's your new bar. Now you have to make a better piece. Um, I think the only exciting thing is knowing that now you're at a new bar and you can push further like it's it's kind of like it's stressful to think okay i can't i have to make this new piece just as good as the last piece um but then like that other angel pops up and says like yeah it's going to be really hard but realize that like now you're better than you were the piece before which means you have the chance of making an even better piece the next time so i think I think that carries me. Does it always come true? Absolutely not. <laughs> it's, you know, it's, sometimes you fall back on your on your uh, on your bad habits. Sometimes you um, you just can't get back there. But it will happen. I mean, I think that's the other thing. Is like you never you never have to worry about will it happen. It just might not happen that that exact moment. But you know, we've all been doing this long enough. You know, ever since we were little kids, it's, it's not like you did one drawing and you could never do one again. It's just you're going to have some bad days. So you got to stick with it. you got to believe that you're, you're going to be able to get in another piece out. Follow up. Do you have any personal projects cooking that you can talk about? Uh, I am working on a 16-page comic. Um, that I'm going to self-publish. Just a little short. I'm s I did a short comic, um, a four-page comic, to fill out a little tiny 16-page sketchbook that I'm selling on my on my uh, shop right now that I just I just printed. They're sitting right over there. Um, so you guys can go check out the the listing and see a little bit of the comic inside there. 
and um, and so then I that was a that was a real that was a lot of fun and so now I'm working on a 16 page comic uh, and I'm gonna slowly ramp up I have a I have a 180 page comic that I've been wanting to work on which is one of my projects which is the um, you know sort of the impetus of, of wanting to go out on my own is to kind of get started on some of this stuff but I I've been doing things long enough where I realize I, I, I shouldn't just jump right into it. I got to kind of, you know, get the wheels moving, figure out exactly how I like to work, um, formatting, brushes, all that stuff. You know, how good am I at actual visual storytelling in that medium? You know, I, I my experience with comics has been um, here and there, and I've never really been happy with my end results, as none of us are when we make our own stuff. But... So I'm kind of taking a stab at that stuff. Um, doing a few uh, freelance projects right now with some some folks that I'm really enjoying, and and then I hope to publish um, my kids' books that I have been writing over the years, and that's um, something that I'm really looking forward to is being able to get back to some of the more whimsical stuff that I've I've always wanted to publish, and I've written quite a few and I've always wanted to have the time to be able to do them all in one sitting not just a little bit here and there so once I commit to doing the kids books I'm gonna just focus on that one at a time so I'll probably disappear from the world for a little bit and not focus on anything else a few things going on So I'm just I'm just kind of going through. And the nice thing about um, spacesuits and space mechs and things like that is you can fill things up with shapes that are kind of like cross contours that kind of break up forms, you know, scribe lines and, and all kinds of things to kind of make them look more interesting, even though they might be kind of a simple form realistically. Alright, Michael, what do you got? So, would you say that all digital apps, roads, procreated sketchbooks somehow lead back to Adobe Photoshop? It seems like most of what artists primarily use Adobe Photoshop. Um, I think most people use Adobe Photoshop. This is okay. I have to, this is I have to answer this carefully because I don't want to I don't want to misconstrue what I'm about to say. Photoshop can do just about the most any program can do. It has the most bells and whistles and the most, um, it has a lot of, it's, you know, it's, it's like, it's almost like a 3D software. Um, it just has so many components and it, it has a lot of things outside the drawing um, world that allow you to, whether it's just, you know, laying in really beautiful type or, um, formatting just like everything it can do is is really helpful now that doesn't necessarily mean that it's the best thing to to draw in to paint in it is actually pretty great um, you know I'm sure you guys have all downloaded people's brushes and, and there are some amazing brushes and the stamping and I actually do a lot of my coloring for these things and I'm not going to do that tonight I'm not going to jump programs but um, you know clip you know, they almost recognize just how good Photoshop is um, because you can save a PSD, which is what I'm working on now. So this isn't Clip's native um, file format. This is a PSD. So I can go between Photoshop and Clip Studio seamlessly, just opening them up both places, and I do that quite often. The only thing you can't do is these rulers and some of those things that are very specific to Clip Studio, those things will get... Um, those will get hosed when I save. So like these ellipse tools, if I save it in the native format, they'll be kept. If I save it to a Photoshop file, then they'll just get obliterated. And there's a few things that when you bring it in from Photoshop that this can't handle, you know, like layer effects and things like that. So those will get obliterated. But for the most part, um, yeah, they're, they're, they're great. And they pair really well together. I'm gonna duplicate this ellipse tool and use it for over here so I can get a nice, clean ellipse. 
Um, but you know, I think the I think the main takeaway has got to be that you draw in whatever you want to make the art, but Photoshop um, Photoshop tends to be really great for finalizing pieces. If you're going to be putting things on the web, printing them, um, you can do it all in Clip Studio. There's nothing to say you couldn't, but you're going to have a much easier time, and it's designed to do it. So, you know, you may not want to paint in it. That's completely up to you. But you do want to know it to some degree because it's going to help you, um, you know, distribute work, whatever it is, whatever that means. That kind of answers your question. I have no preference over any programs. I'm not that guy. I think all programs are great. I love trying new programs out because I've been making video games for so long. I'm very, very used to just trying new software out all the time. And, you know, yeah, you can get into a situation where you're the jack of all trades, master of none kind of situation. But at the same time, most software nowadays is they are really trying to get people up and running sooner. So a lot of the interface are very similar. So it's there's only a few alien things and then you can, you know, you're up and running in no time. If that makes sense. I jumped out for like 20 minutes. Sorry, you had already mentioned this before. You were talking about the kids getting ready to... <laughs> oh, how's working with the kids? Um, yeah, I, I won't get too I won't get too personal, but you know one of the one of the big reasons that I left Insomniac was um, was because my daughter is uh, is old enough now where she's she's just not she's not going to be at the house much more. She's going to go to college, not not right away, but soon. And um, it just kind of dawned on me that I I hadn't seen her as much as I wanted to. So that was a that was a big reason why I wanted to spend more time at home and so we have some hard times you know having kids hanging out all the time you know we get at each other's throats like every family does but um, it's awesome it's awesome to be able to see them all the time I am not going to take it for granted my son comes in unannounced and just interrupts me in the middle of meetings and all kinds of things and first I thought it was gonna not work and then I just kind of embraced it and I just think it's hilarious what is my favorite machinery to look at um, my two favorites my two go to well um, yeah, I guess my two go-tos, the probably, or three that I have the most reference of, and, I, and I'm and i looking, I'm very consciously looking for things that I've never seen before, you know, going back to like the 50s and 40s and looking for really, um, you know, beautiful machinery. Machinists are artists, you know, the people who came up with that stuff, the deco stuff, and, but I like, basically, if I'm drawing robots all the time, motorcycles are robots. There's just no getting around it. You look at a motorcycle, especially like, you know, um, you know, like modern rice rockets and things like that. Like they're just amazing. They're beautiful, and they're just the paint jobs and the technology in them. So that stuff is great. Um, I I love old tractors. I have tons and tons of reference to tractors to the point where I become um, accidentally a bit of a tractor aficionado. So now I like build models of tractors, and I have like little like Hot Wheels of tractors and stuff like that. It's, it's kind of upsetting in a way. Um, so I love tractors. I think those are, especially the antique ones. Um, so I, I really like looking at that stuff. And then, of course, construction equipment. I think construction equipment is my favorite. Um, the, the difference between the modern stuff and the new stuff is fascinating. And again, those machinists, they're artists. They, they definitely care about what they're working on. And when you look at the, the kind of nice blend between the smooth kind of like shell features of their, you know, the bodies versus like the tech that they're trying to cover up and the stuff that they have to leave exposed and the way that they, they, they strike these beautiful balances. I don't know, I just fall in love with, with that equipment. My 
weight box kind of make me realize how far I have to go. Any advice on not getting too discouraged? Andrea, yeah, that, that, the best advice I can give to you on that is you're never not going to feel discouraged. I feel discouraged when I look at other people's works every day. You never, like, this is something I talk about a lot. And, um, well, I've all got you captive, so you're not going anywhere. But you're never, ever going to like your work. You never, you're never going to be the one that's just in love with the thing that you just made. And that's, that's, that's a really, really tough thing to kind of get your head around. You know, we don't like our own work. I don't like my work. But I understand that if I do it well, other people respond to it. And that response is coming from them not being able to create the same kind of work I'm creating. Even though I'm tired of it, I'm tired of looking at the stuff that I make. I know what I'm going to draw or I know how it's going to come out or I'm, I know that I'm going to be disappointed with a lot of things. It, it can get to you, you know, but you have to keep in mind that other people can't do what you're doing. You just by your sheer existence, your sheer inception, you have a unique voice and people want to see unique voices. They want to see everyone's unique voices. Nobody listens to one kind of like one type of music all the time you know they want tons of it um, so when you see everyone's artwork and you think that they're too far ahead that's just them practicing their own voice but what you're really responding to is just the accuracy in which they're able to um, speak their voice so you just have to stick with it your voice is going to get clearer and clearer um, it's okay to be behind but just remember it's the it's what you're saying and it's that what you're saying is unique and nobody else can say it. You know, no one can ever take that from you. No one's ever going to be able to compete with that. They, they are not you. And that is your biggest asset. So don't, don't get too discouraged. Definitely see them as positive challenges. Someone's rocking it. You know, if you see someone that you just think is like the best thing in the whole world, that's a good thing. You know, sometimes you're not always able to set your new bar where you want to go with something, where you want to take yourself next. And so if other people can help you by kind of showing you up a little bit, that's, that can, they have to see that as a positive experience. Let's see, we got some compliments, which is nice. Thank you, Kylie, even Kim Jong-ji. Oh my God, Kim, <laughs> I, I do have a hard time watching that guy work. That guy makes me feel like, like my arms are broken. Um, very Dr. Manhattan advice on the Mars. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Sorry, I don't, I don't want to get deep or anything like that. I, just, I really do feel passionate that I think people can get discouraged and not want to make artwork. They feel like other people aren't working hard and aren't suffering. We got nobody. Nobody loves their work that, you know, is actually got their head screwed on straight. Art is a very humbling experience. All right, I'm going to cheat a little bit here and just draw one vent and do some duplication. Yeah, I when Bobby told me that the show was going to be a buck, I, you know, I knew I was definitely signing up for the right kind of show. I think he just wanted everybody to have a great experience, and I think everybody seems to have had a really great experience. It's very cool. Smoky Oregon. Oh my gosh, Anne. I'm so sorry. I hope everything is doing okay up there. How far do you plan out your pieces? Do you often go into projects knowing the outcome or do your best pieces come from spontaneity? Um, 
let's see. And oh, uh, I'm going to jump into Amelia real quick. Um, moving from clip to Photoshop and it's hard. Take take a step back when you um, when you transition. Take a step back and realize that like um, most of it is the same, but they have it set up on different hotkeys and in different places. And if you just give yourself a few days, keep your Photoshop up, Photoshop up and set up your menus to have the same hotkeys to be in the same places and you're gonna have a much easier time they all do virtually the same thing they call things a lot of different things but once you sort of get familiar with which one is which and where they all are then um, they start to feel very similar and um, I plan my pieces out in the sense that um, you know I I oh, how far do I plan I do like to just free draw but you know you certainly don't have that opportunity when you're working with clients or you know if you have a specific task that you have to accomplish but um, for my own pieces um, I do leave a lot of the spontaneity as part of the process you know I'll, I, I like to think that I, I know I'm gonna do um, you know an alien or if I, I'm gonna do a monster or something like that but sometimes that even changes um, that is because finding that 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 thing I've never seen before is it's a, that mystery is kind of fun you know I'm looking for that so that's sort of the high that I'm chasing I guess um, but I do I do try to at least have a general idea of what I'm trying my dad told me that he met a guy who drew the Incredible Hulk and all he had to do to draw it was just picture it on the page and then he could just draw the Hulk he just traced it and I thought he was telling the truth I'm convinced that that guy was lying to my dad because I've never ever been able to have that uh, experience. So there's just a lot of spontaneity. All right, there's a lot of stuff coming up. Do you think a variety of styles on my portfolio as well as all types of designs? That is a um, that's a personal choice. That is from Pablo. If you are the kind of person who really likes to work in a lot of different styles, then that's perfect for you. But if that's something that you're forcing yourself to do, I do not recommend it. Um, it. It really is a personal choice. There's no right answer to that. It is up to the individual artist. Some people who are the sort of jack of all trades artists and do really well at that stuff, and they, you know, you, they're incredible. Um, and there's, but there is one guarantee: if you are moving around a lot of different styles, you're never going to master one. So. Um, there is a trade-off you know you're never you're never going to be the best at your style if you're moving between a lot of different styles of course there's a lot of gray zone in there and I just I don't I don't really like speaking in absolutes so don't quote me on that let me catch up with a few questions here I have a lot going on here um, you're welcome Amelia anything your art prime doesn't start till your 40s I think <laughs> that would be that would be good I hope that's true hey is your stream working for people this hope so uh, okay Clark County if I may answer that I've been using Photoshop since version 2.0 and when I tried clip I was already comfortable yeah good shortcuts yep Okay, they're moving faster than I can read. I'm gonna disable streaming to Lightbox. I'm sorry if, I, if there's any technical issues going on. I, I'm I'm not the technical guy, so if something with Lightbox um, got disconnected, I'm not gonna be able to do anything about it. Not without stopping completely. YouTube cut light box off. That's funny. Oh my gosh. Oh, it must be because we're like after hours or something like that. Okay, so. Do you find and trust your own voice? <laughs> um, yes. Gosh, that's, that's a really tough thing to say yes to. Um, but yeah, you have to, you have to trust yourself. You have to have blind trust in yourself. Um, you really have to just 
understand that, like I said before, you're not going to like your own work. Um, and that's okay. You you just you just have to trust that nobody else is doing what you're doing because they're not you. So you have to keep making it, and you have to you have to be okay with the fact that you aren't going to love your work. Um, and that is just that is just you wanting to push yourself. You never if you're never satisfied, you're never satisfied. And so yeah, you have to trust that you're going to push through it goes a long way we're all out on our own we're all sitting in our studios by ourselves and yet the only person you have to trust is yourself so i'm not i'm not kind of like a, a, a mental guru or anything like that i don't really have like good advice on like that stuff but i do believe that you have to you have to trust yourself using OBS to stream yep uh, let's see the light box link says it's down but you can still click the link and get it here that's how I got here maybe it's because it's the last stream yeah I, if you guys are having trouble um, just jump right over to YouTube and um, stream the stream isn't technically attached to to lightbox in any way it's just they were just hitting a link so you can just jump into the channel sorry i didn't realize that, that was going to happen but it is still streaming you just have to jump over to youtube and jump back in all right this whole therapy you would be such a good therapist coming from a therapist thanks appreciate that Last thing I need to do is shoulder other people's problems when I'm still sorting out my own. <laughs> Greg, do you listen to music while you draw? Uh, yes, I actually have something to say about that because I, um, I can't listen to music I've never heard before. And I get sucked into it. And I start trying to listen to the lyrics. I can't. I can watch videos. Um, I, can, I can watch movies that I've seen before, um, but I can't watch or listen to anything that I um, like. I try and listen to NPR and all kinds of things like that, and catch up and use that time wisely, like while I'm just sketching. And um, I just get distracted, and I end up sitting back in my chair and just listening to the stuff. So. Um, no, I have to listen to things that I've heard before, and that way I'm not concentrating on them directly. Let's see where I got. Well, Greg, you listen to music. Okay. Are you a fan of vintage airplanes? Like, oh, like Spitfires? Yeah. Um, I do, I do love the Spitfires. Uh, the Spitfires are basically just hot rods, right? With the awesome graphics on them. Um, I'm not a nut for them, but I think that is like the prime era for aircraft. So I love that stuff. Uh, some other streams this morning we're doing that. Looks like fine on YouTube though. Yep, good. Okay. So to fix your audio, all you need to do is increase the mic slider until your voice in the yellow. Oh yeah, sorry. Um, it's not. <laughs> if I'm mumbling, it's because I I'm a mumbler. If I talk at a normal human rate, like my wife wants me to, um, then I can be heard just fine. So if I'm mumbling, that's my fault, and I'm sorry. And I'm consciously trying to not do that, but that's what I. That's my default voice is mumble. So like when I'm doing things like eyes on these guys and I know I'm going to be making like a organic character with a lot of nooks and crannies in them. I like to keep the eye nice and clean so I, I do often use the ruler tool to do things like eyes so that it's very precise and that way when I put the wrinkles all over it's got a nice balance against it. All right. So what sort of stuff do I listen to? Uh, listen to the Pixies, and I listen to Sylvanesso. 
What's am I listening to right now? Mountain Men, which is their other band. Um, I do watch a lot of Leica movies, old Tom and Jerry movie, uh, cartoons. Um, yeah, a little bit all over the place. Let's see. Thank you for this. Approach in studying machines, engines, and applying them to your artwork. Um, I think the, the, when you're doing robots and technology and things like that, I think, I think you have to marry anatomy, like your lessons in anatomy with technology and try and find, um, ways to look at both of them and kind of merge them together so that they flow. When you try and make a mechanical form active, you know, you see this in like sports cars and spitfires and whatever. They feel, they feel like they're, hold on, let me make sure I get this line right. They feel like they're based on, on organic nature forms. And subconsciously we see them as strong or weak or powerful. And I think when you're playing with machinery, you have to, you have to think about them almost as natural forms and that way they start to carry a little bit of the kind of personification that you're looking for in those, those shapes. Let's see, yeah, you made it back, that's awesome. I'm glad some of you guys are finding your way back. Oh, you sound fine. Previous comics are good, thanks, appreciate it. <laughs> Do you listen to Perfect Circle? Yeah, I've listened to my. I have. To, I have personally because of the, how much coffee I drink and everything. I've had to stop listening to angry music. I love it. You know, I, I love getting my. I even listened to a lot of <laughs> Rob Zombie for a long time. You know, it just it doesn't really matter. Like actually, like kind of like the the junkier, like rock it is. Sometimes that's better. It really gets you going. But then there's a sort of anxiety that goes along with it. And even though you're feeling pepped up and you're going. Um, you know, it, it can it can kind of drive you a little crazy as well. Like, yeah, you're able to really concentrate. Uh, let's see. So evil, evil arts. It all depends on what you want to do. You can most likely succeed in digital art without traditional. Oh, am I missing a question that was before that? Should an artist? Oh, okay. Uh, Mika, should an artist master their skills with traditional media before moving to digital art? The only thing I'll say about traditional media, and it does not even have to be traditional media anymore because I, I've, I've been talked out of this argument, um, is life drawing. I think you do need to life draw. I think everybody in this chat, everybody who wants to be a character designer, anybody who wants to just be um, a comic artist, whatever, you have to do life drawing. Um, everybody's bringing iPads now. And at first I thought, I know, I kind of like, I was like, that's not going to work. It does work. It works perfect. It doesn't matter. It's all about the end result. It's all about like recording the information in front of you and training yourself. So does it have to be traditional media? No. Um, I think what people benefit from with the traditional media is there is a sexiness to a lot of the end results with pencils and just like the juiciness. So like even this pencil that I created here, I mimicked it after what I liked about my pencils. So um, I think it's... Um, I, I do think it's about um, knowing what you want. Sometimes, you know, your your time with traditional media uh, gives you a little bit of a target, but it does, it's not an absolute. There are no there are no absolutes. All right, uh, let's see. So cool, love your line work. Glad you like it. Fundamentals, yes, definitely. Yeah, it's all about what you're drawing. It really doesn't matter what the medium is. Wish I could be lining with you, but I'm dead tired. Yeah, I know it's late. I'm sorry, but these will all be recorded. So if you guys want to watch them later and kind of go through them and use the tools, uh, you'll have that. Uh, they're not always angry, especially Murder Norm's album. <laughs> no, I know, but you know what I mean. Like they, like those those albums, uh, they do. They are trying to evoke an emotion out of you, and sometimes that does, that's not in tune with the emotion that you need. For that piece you know if I'm if I'm doing something that's supposed to be silly and funny and I'm listening to something that's depressing 
uh, I'm probably not hitting the note as well. Uh, so no more death metal. <laughs> no, only only in the, only in the car, right? Um, except Judith, because that's a his anger towards. Oh God. Okay, I'm not gonna get into that. So what are you drawing? Uh, I'm doing this alien explorer guy. I um, I don't really have much story behind him except for our, I imagine he's kind of lost out in space and I thought it would be kind of funny to do this simple alien up in a kind of like a more detailed uh, suit that you know kind of showed off you know the kind of technology that came from I like I like the idea that um, sometimes technology is gets us there but it gets in the way of us actually experiencing something or it's pales in comparison to you know where it actually gets us i think that's always really great when you you know you when you use technology to get you somewhere to see something natural and beautiful and just fall in awe of it so i draw a lot of a lot of, a lot of characters just staring at natural things in disbelief in my drawing do you think the line, do you think the online life drawing is a good substitute for in real life drawing? Um, no, but I, uh, to clarify that, I think um, you do the best you can. You do with what you have. You know, we're all we're all in kind of a jam right now, and I don't think giving in and saying something is not good enough, so I'm not going to do it all, is the excuse you're looking for. Um, don't don't. Don't give in to that. It's not, you know, and everybody has their preference. Some people don't want to go to life drawing. They don't want to be in those con in those those situations. So then that it's never good for them. But drawing online is a great alternative. Um, is your pencil in the files for the goodie bag? No, but it's free on Gumroad. Um, if anybody's jumped in after I already made that little announcement, um, the PSD for this file as well as all these brushes over here that I'm gonna be using for the, um, the the whole demo are free for download on Gumroad right now. If you go to the YouTube channel, or if you're already right there, you go to the, um, the description, all the links are there. And at the end of this, whatever the final PSD is, I've been saving those out, getting them nice and cleaned up, and then I put those up on Gumroad as well. So if anybody wants to have the final file with all the colored layers and shading and everything all layered out, you'll be able to download that as well. Uh, how do I stay motivated to work? Daniel. Um, I don't know. I think it's, I, I do, I do, I have come to terms with the fact that it is a little bit how we're wired. Not everybody is wired to just want to work all the time. Um, I do. I just love working. I love solving these problems and trying to figure it out. It's not always healthy. That's the other side of the coin. I think a lot of people who um, have have trouble coming up with the motivation also have the the side benefit of not always burning themselves out. So there's pluses and minuses for both sides of it. But to stay motivated, I think you just gotta you have to have a challenge in mind that you want to meet. If you feel challenged, and not by other people necessarily, but by yourself, I think that can that goes a long way. Just an expectation of yourself that. You are determined to hit. Let's see. How do you stay motivated? There is something to be said for working out. Traditionally, though, oh yeah. I mean, I if you've done it and you loved it, is it's hard to replicate. You know, and like I said, I'm I'm mimicking my brushes after that experience. There's nothing sweeter than that number two pencil that I used all the way through grade school. Um, but can you do? Oh, so getting angry at the drivers is fine. <laughs> yes. That's, you know, you got to get angry at somebody. Uh, yeah, if you're happy, that's fine. I'm not. I get caught up in it. I want to throw, throw hands. And that's not a good place to be when you're drawing. New drawing is better than no drawing. Yep, over 400 nude models. I don't know what that means, but yeah, I'm sure there are. My coworkers and I figured drawing every weekend on Discord. Cool. See, that's awesome. Because drawing is also can be very communal. Um, doing doing it with friends and stuff is is great. Learn a lot, 
and they kind of hold you to the fire a little bit. I've been watching so many panels this weekend, my head's kind of spinning. Yep, that means you got everything you're supposed to get out of the weekend. It'll clear up. That's a temporary feeling. Wrap up this line work and we'll start flatting this guy. All right. Where am I at here? I've been watching. Okay, yep. That was, and then Kyle Gentry says, concentric circle tool, I believe. Yes, I am using the concentric tool uh, that is in the, I keep it in a, under a ruler's palette, special concentric rulers. And then um, I showed it before, but it basically is just like it locks your pen to the concentric rings and it has an access point that you can slide it across. And so you can do a lot of really wonderful things with it. That is um, something that is built into Clip Studio. Uh, and then actually I just saw 360, 360VR. This is Clip Studio. Um, and so that's what I'm using tonight. How did you come up with the name Lost Bear Studios? Um, Lost Bear was kind of the name that I came up with for, I'm, I live in the woods now. I used to live in Pasadena. Now I live in North Carolina in the middle of the woods. And um, after I left Insomniac, I was really feeling kind of lost. Well, actually, part of leaving Insomniac was, you know, just kind of that, what am I going to do next kind of thing. And um, I was feeling very lost and in the woods, and I thought, you know, Lost Bear just kind of became this sort of like touchstone for, you know, how I was feeling. Let's see, number two pencils rule. Yes, they do. It's clip paint. Thank you for answering that for him. Last question, how long did it take you to get this good? Uh, tonight. Like it just, it's an on, <laughs> it's an ongoing process. You just, you're never ever done. And, um, I, I would stop if I was done. So those, that is the kind of motivation that I'm looking for. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a never ending thing. I used to draw with this guy, um, who's 80 years old and he was just so thrilled with the fact that he was still learning. And it was so inspiring. I was like 20 at the time. And he was just like, ah, every day I'm getting better. It's like, that's awesome. As artists, like what an amazing gift we have that, you know, you may not be real happy with how you're feeling right now, but it means that like, you don't have to retire. You're never going to hate your job. You're going to be in your 80s. And you're going to be drawing. and You're still going to be having a blast at all the new things that you're learning. Uh, life drawing. Anything is better than nothing. Yep. Absolutely. I hope you know we appreciate you and our artists for petitioning. Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, Pasadena, yep. Pasadena was awesome. Not, not awesome to raise my kids in. They wanted very, they wanted a lot of money for houses and schools and things like that. <laughs> uh, if anyone wants to use concentric circles in Photoshop, yes. Lazy is awesome. That would. All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna stop looking at the chat just for a little bit. So I apologize if your question goes by. We're gonna take some questions at the end, but I'm gonna start flatting. So I'll talk through the process of how I'm gonna flat real quick. Um, so I'm in the inks folder. Um, this is just me trying to stay organized. So in Clip Studio, there's this icon up here in the top of the palette. It looks like a little lighthouse. I think it is a lighthouse. And you set that lighthouse um, onto that layer. So now if I go into the flats layer in Photoshop, if you were to use the fill brush, it's only going to work on the actual layer that has what you're filling into. Um, in Clip, they were smart enough to make it so that um, I can fill on a separate layer while still referencing back. And so that lighthouse represents the reference layer that I'm using to do all of my flatting. So the way I like to start is I pick some really bright garish color. It does not matter what color it is. It just has to be bright enough where I can actually tell the difference. Um, I'm going to turn off my rough art now. And that way I'm left with just the line work. I still have access to it, but it's closed down. And then in here, I'm just going to fill outside to kind of start locking in my silhouette. And this is a little bit of a weird process when you first see it, but uh, this is the way I like to work. And I'm gonna probably do two passes because I do want to treat his glass bubble almost as a, you know, as transparent as well. Um, but anyway, so I'm filling, and it's not perfect. It has, like I left a little open line down there, but that's pretty good. There's in between that wire, 
it filled in up here, no problem. Anyway, so I'm control clicking on that layer now and it turns um, the filled paint into a selection and I'm gonna create a mask off of that selection. So I hit a mask at the bottom of the um, layer palette. I'm going to drag um, that mask up onto my flats folder and I'm gonna invert it. And I'm gonna delete that mask off of this layer. Oh, I didn't invert it. I'm gonna invert it, there we go. So now uh, it's hiding everything. I'm gonna fill this flats layer back up with paint and now you can see that because I inverted the mask, everything that is filled, uh, everything that is inside this folder is now masked off to only show what's inside that silhouette. And now just to kind of tweak the mask where it had a couple of errors, I'm gonna go back to my brushes, go to the flatting brush, uh, which is just like a nice thick solid brush, no noise on it or anything like that. And I'm just gonna go and kind of tweak the mask until everything is just right. And I'm using that blue as kind of like a guide to make sure that everything is filled in right. I appreciate you guys all supporting each other. That's awesome. It's definitely, art is definitely a, a trial. Keeps you, keeps you very humble. All right, so now I'm gonna, what I like to do is I now take that layer and I desaturate it and I just leave it as a gray. I'm gonna work on it a little bit darker than that. And then um, the very first mask, other, other mask that I wanna create is the glass. So I'm going to, I'll pick like a bright green and I'm just going to start using that paint bucket and I'm gonna try and isolate everything that's glass. It doesn't have to be perfect. I just need, I really wanna pay attention to the edges. And then if I go back to my brush palette, I didn't add this to the downloads because this is, a, this is native to Clip Studio, but this lasso fill, it acts just like a regular lasso select, but except for when you drop the selection, it immediately fills everything up. So I can use it to just fill that area right away. So if I turn off the line work, you can see that's what I'm left with. Right, so now I'm gonna be able to make that a little bit transparent. Um, so now what I wanna do on this one down here, after I make this a little bit transparent, I'm gonna put a mask on that and I'm actually going to go back to the paint bucket. I'm gonna set, instead of a foreground color, I'm actually gonna set it to transparent. I'm gonna start technically removing and you can see I, I filled that entire area around his head and his, his suit. And so now I have that fill and I have the glass. And so I'll be keeping the glass off for the time being, and but I'll have that later when I wanna turn that back on. Cool, so I'm gonna keep going. I'll answer some questions as I, as I can look up, but I wanna make sure that I'm still moving at the same time. So I can already see that there's a few errors in here. Um, let me tweak those real quick. And there we go. Happy little trees. Okay. So that's my alien. Um, and then I'm going to now, because I want to, um, I want this area here that is, well, I'm not going to make it overcomplicated. I'll just keep it simple. Okay, so let's start with the simple stuff like his eye. I can fill in his eye. So on a separate layer, I'm going to name it eye. All right, definitely want to label your layers as much as you can. Um, does a pretty good job. I know that it didn't fill in behind that pupil very well, so I'm just going to kind of scrub over that a little bit. Okay, next layer is going to be teeth. And I keep them on separate layers because just like I did before, I can, uh, when I start shading, I can load those as selections and I think that is really helpful. Okay, so we got teeth and then below the teeth and eyes, I'm gonna do his skin color. So it just, it doesn't really, I'm not picking final colors right now. I'm getting as close as I think I can, um, but I, it's not important 
to pick a final color right now because I can always adjust it. What's more important is making sure that my selections and my masks are accurate. Yeah. I always go back and kind of tweak them a little bit because I know you, you don't want to rely on the programmatic fills too much. They, they can have errors in them. Okay, so we've got the alien isolated out and now we can do his suit so I'm gonna keep the three layers that are um, the alien itself um, up above and I'm just gonna work below it so I'm gonna the when I do a suit usually the first thing I go to is either the paint or dark rubbers in this case I'm gonna start with dark rubbers um, and start filling in all those sort of areas that are rubber. And what I like about that is it immediately sets that like I start to be able to picture I start to be able to picture where I'm going to need to put paint, what kind of intensity I need to put in. I feel like I'm missing jokes, you guys are all laughing at each other. What's the alien's name? Well I had to I had to when I did the alien or the nightmare monster on Friday night I had you guys name it, so if you have something in mind, definitely let me know. I usually end up calling him like Frank or Aubrey or Jennifer or something like that so it just feels feels like there's a lot of contrast between what you're looking at and the relatability of the name Cecil Cecil's a good name for an alien Roberto this guy could be a Roberto I was doing his logo, I'd make the O in Roberto's name, the eyeball. Let's see what else is going to be rubber in this little doodad in here. Maybe the bottom of the antenna. Okay, so that's, oh, and then like the inside of his suit here. And I don't think I mentioned it in this one. I've mentioned it in the other ones. Um, Clip has uh, one slight different ability that um, I wish Photoshop would add. I know there are ways to do it, but it's not as straightforward. Um, the color picker, the swatches over here underneath the two palette, they have um, both the foreground and background color like you see in most Adobe products. Uh, but the difference is it also has this transparent as well. And you can swap between transparent and your f uh, foreground fill color um, and that gets you that means that you can stay on the brush that you're working with but um, you can use it as an eraser very quickly and then what I do is I map the swap between those between the foreground color and the transparency to the button on my pen and that way when I'm working um, I can not just add and subtract add subtract without actually picking up my pen and I that way if I make a mistake and if I overpaint, I can just hit the button and erase it back out, and it's very fast. It reduces a lot of the, um, the time that it takes to do that stuff. All right, the next thing I'm going to do, so I'm going to call that rubber, so I don't forget. And then the next one is going to be, I'll do the light metals, and I'll do the lights. Actually, I'll do the lights first. Lights always stand out. So these are usually pretty easy. I'm going to do a light in there, and do that there, and there. Yep, that was fast. Okay, so those are lights. And then the next one is going to be light metal. So that'll be like, you know, the bright aluminums. I type with my left hand, so I always make huge typos. 
if I have my keyboard over on the left from all the 3D modeling I've done over the years. Oh, there's only two things. I'll make this thing I'll make this thing aluminum as well. Why not? I don't know how it'll work, but that's what we're doing tonight. And then the wires, and then we can get into the paint. All right, I'm just looking at the bottom of the chat, so if I've just completely missed what you've said, I apologize. We'll jump back in. Um, any experience to share in terms of you introducing to new programs? All right, I've probably already said this, um, but I've been working in video games for 20 years now, and you just have to make peace with the fact that about every six months of your life, you're going to be learning a new piece of software. And at first, it's really frustrating, um, but you just have to learn to love it. You have to learn that, and they're just getting better um, at it. You know, it's it's just getting better and better. So it's not it's not as cumbersome as it used to be. Um, but yeah, just learn as many pieces of software as you can. If you don't like them, drop them. But having a little bit of knowledge goes a long way in each piece of software. So just just have to go for it. And now with YouTube, you can learn anything you want. Oh my gosh, you guys, you guys are gonna have to like do like a like a self-guided vote as to what you guys are gonna name this thing. Auto is an awesome name. Any experience? Yeah. So that was Evil Arts. Any experience to share in terms of you introducing yourself to new programs? So watch, you know, watch the demos. Um, the demos are are always you know the first thing, and then you know you get frustrated because when you open it, the person using it. <laughs> obviously knew it a lot better than you so you get super mad and feel like you're never gonna be able to catch up you know I'm gonna teach myself blender um, but the nice thing is if you just you know if you just kind of stick with it eventually tons of videos start coming out and they because they want you to use your program so they're gonna make it they're gonna get users involved and they're gonna have all kinds of people get involved and um, start using that program and then you'll be able to learn from them all right Most recent switch was Procreate, but I felt like it's nowhere near as complicated as Photoshop or Clip Studio, which I've been too reluctant to learn. Yeah, um, but you know what? Uh, Clip, um, Procreate is a great gateway into using more complex programs. So if it's a baby step into using the more complex programs, then that's that's a great way to use it. Don't don't be ashamed of that or not in any way. Um, so. I don't like every piece of program, every piece of software that I that I pick up, um, but I like trying them because usually the reason someone invents a new piece of software is because they had an idea on one specific feature that they thought was going to crush everyone else's. Oh, you went. Oh, I'm just catching up a little bit too. You use ZBrush before Photoshop? Yeah, ZBrush is bonkers, but it's fun as anything. Photoshop, it's intimidating, it's huge. Anybody who says it's not hard isn't necessarily being fair. I have to say it, it is a hard program if you know everything. If you really, like it, you have to have a lot of practice. The best way to get good at it is using it. Um, so, um, okay. So here's the trick I'm gonna do. So I've got my paint. I'll probably add some scribe lines in, but I'm gonna mess this guy up a little bit. So I'm gonna I'm gonna act like there's some dark metal underneath. Not quite as dark as the rubber. And then I'm gonna turn on the paint color, kind of like a creamy 80s PC color. And I'm gonna put a mask on that. And I'm gonna start chewing away a little bit. The first thing I'm gonna do tonight is I'm gonna um, I'm gonna show you like chewing metal using this lasso tool. So I'm gonna start using the lasso tool just start carving away to kind of get chipped metal. Now I'm not going to just use this but it, it gives you these like really nice chunky marks. And you can do this with a brush, you can do this with stamps, you can do it with whatever you want. Got no rules. Rules don't hold us. 
but what's nice is like I can I can get these like really oh it's doing a save okay I can get these bigger shapes and I can cut back into them until it feels right so I'm just going to put some bigger kind of like deliberate paint chips around Yeah, I, I really don't think, you know, like people, people become um, so fixated on the program that they're using. And I think that's the wrong fixation. I don't think we have the energy for that. I think you got to just fall in love with the end process. And all right, I'm going to switch to a brush. It's, it really, it really isn't about what program you're using. It's about what you're actually f coming out with. You know, people use Procreate who are awesome. That's great. People use Photoshop. They're awesome. That's great. People who use Procreate and they're not doing the best work that they can do, but they force themselves to use Procreate because they want to be a team player. That's not doing anybody any favors. You don't have time for that. Use whatever you want. What do you do to get over creative blocks? Um, I have to go for walks. I have to get myself out of my normal routine a little bit and go and look for stories. I have to get away from art. I, I, I lose it on art a lot. You know, I don't want to always be making art. So get, getting yourself out of familiar situations and kind of getting to um, getting yourself new visuals to look at. Um, I try not to look at other people's work too much. That just brings you down. Um, it, it can, if you're in the right mindset, it can be really inspiring. But if you're having create a block, I often find that it's not the thing you need. I think you need to go out and just experience something, do something new, do something you haven't done before. Um, even if that just means going to the coffee shop or going to the grocery store. But you know, like some of my best ideas come from the checkout line. You know, just watching someone do something bizarre, the way that they act, the way that they treat the cashier. You know, like, oh, okay, you're going to be a villain. So you can see how I'm, I'm using the mask. If I turn the mask off, it goes back to pristine, but I'm using the mask to kind of chew that paint back and reveal the darker gray that's underneath. And that way I can sort of add, subtract in these chips and I don't ever have to worry about screwing up my overall paint that I spent time getting that accurate mask off. So I can still use this main layer as a, as a selection mask um, but I can have these nice chunky cutaways as well. All right, I'm just gonna soften some of this up. I look like some of the paint's kind of faded out. that's a really specific um, thing you want to do and I actually think the fact that you're so uh, interested in something specific if you're gonna focus on it and you're gonna just become really really good at it then that's that's exactly how you get in it it's the fact that you're focused on it and it's becoming your passion it's gonna be you know you think about like someone like Drew Struzan who did all the 80s and 90s and even 2000s movie posters you know, he was passionate about it. He did that one thing and he just got better and better at it and he got more and more notoriety. So it's, I think a big part of it is actually just making the push to be the one that's really good at doing it. Let's see, where am I at? Uh, Dave and I, Dave, Dave was, uh, Dave and I were at Insomniac together for all that time. So that's uh, when I did Creature Box, or well, I'm still doing Creature Box, but um, we just we never worked on each other's work, um, but we worked on Ratchet and Clank together. So we always uh, shared a lot of the design principles, um, and so we started Creature Box and we started doing books together and things like that. And so it's always been really, really fun. He's an amazing artist. I'm his biggest fan. Um, so yeah, it's uh, just 
it's just been kind of a fun ride to be able to do stuff. It's it, it it's always just been kind of like you know when you we started Creature Box because um, when we were working in games we would come up with designs for things that had no business being in a game but we couldn't let them go. We thought the designs were too good. All right, that's a that sounds arrogant. We thought the designs needed to live, and so we had to kind of find a place where we could actually explore those things and push them and do some cool stuff with them. So. Creature Box was born out of the need to let some of these things that couldn't necessarily live in commercial products survive. All right, so that's the chipping. All right, so now I'm gonna I'm gonna go above that, and I'm actually gonna do like a little bit of like oil drips and sooting and things like that. So I'll use, let's use the newsprint, kind of like an oily dark brown. I'm gonna set that to multiply. And I'm just gonna ghost in some, some drips where some oil has leaked out. Actually, I guess that needs to go up there. Just building up these textures, you know, the, the modulation and the grime goes a long way. How it builds up in the crevices. And this is a great time if you guys have stamps of rock brushes and things like that that you like, you can bring those out and start kind of getting some really interesting modulation, whatever you gotta do. So then we're going to take the, let's see, the wires. I don't like the color of those wires. So let's make those like an orange or something. There we go. The lights, that's not a bad color for the light, but I think maybe a bit more green. And with the lights, I usually go a little darker. That way, when I do that, when I start bringing the highlights in, I have somewhere to go with them. And then we'll go to the alien. And this is so I'm going to create a layer above the alien. I'm going to link it down over top of it. And I'm going to start putting in some of his, his belly colors. Start out kind of broad. Maybe he has like spotting, kind of emerges out of that. Different sizes. And we can always just dump it, reverse that back down a little bit. And then Maybe his lips, got a little bit of pink in them. And then around his eye on the back of him, I think we'll go a little darker. When I do this kind of patterning, I usually start by just giving it a little bit of a ghost darkening and then shrink the brush way down and then create this these sort of like almost like giraffe patterns kind of interlock. I think that always looks pretty cool. Little puzzle pieces. Just about done with the flatting and I'll I'll look at the chat and make sure I'm answering any of the questions that are popping up. But I appreciate anybody who's jumping in and kinda of helping me out, answer some of the questions that are a bit more universal. Oh, I see networking happening. That's cool. I like networking. 
Okay, so that's his skin on his teeth. I'm gonna put a little plaque at the base. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna oh, I'm gonna lock the transparency of that. Just put a little nasty down at the base here. Question. This is so many brushes are out there. Purchase, download. What are your divining rod that leads you to the quality of brushes, or is it a matter of personal taste? Um, I just try a lot of brushes out. I waste a lot of money. I actually, um, personally, just because I'm kind of an old man now, I like to I like to create my brushes as much as possible. I like to create my stamps as much as possible, but I also like to hand paint as much as possible. Um, that is a self-guided um, thing. That is not necessarily what everybody should be doing. But um, it just sometimes I think that the textures need to look like they came from the same spot. And this is not always the case, but same place as the actual drawing itself. I think sometimes that adds a nice level of consistency. All right, we're gonna get a little bit of volume going on these eyes. Now, this is not the volume from shading. This is like what I imagine, like you know, like the it's getting a little, a little bit of blood volume going there, and then I'll cheat some veins in to kind of get him a little bit of believability. are doing all kinds of networking cool all right so let's get into shading we've got the flats done and ultimately we're going to put the glass over top of this um, but we're going to ignore that just for a little bit longer so i accidentally put the shading layer below the flats but i'm going to move that up there and i'm going to open up that and now in between my flats and my shading layer i usually add a full white layer and i just fill it that way i'm like completely hiding the flats and I'm just going to drop the transparency down to about 60% and so while I'm working on the shading I don't see the full value range of the color but I do have a sense of like where the colors are and that helps me um, just concentrate on the shading. I'm going to use a really dark gray form of shading so I'm just going to fill this layer and I'll use the same mask that I used before but I do I want to add that to it. There, got it. Okay, and I'm going to set this to multiply. And now I can see my color below it. And I'm going to put a mask on that, and I'm going to invert that. So now, as I paint into that mask, it's going to reveal the uh, the shading. So I'm going to. You guys are going to laugh at me a little bit, but um, so now I'm going to load the eye as a selection and I'm going to start using the airbrush a lot more. So, eye is nice because it's a circle, so we all know how circles are supposed to look. Um, but then, as I move around the forms, I just like to make these selections and then slowly start just wiping in those shadows. You start with the broad and then you figure out if anything's cast on top of it. And just rinse and repeat. This always looks a little garbagey at first. Um, I have a lot of part of well, a big part of my process is hating it at the beginning and then <laughs> slowly making peace with it and trying to fix things. That 
something I've come to terms with. Kind of looks like Steve Buscemi. So I've inadvertently decided that the shadow is going to be coming, or I'm sorry, the light is going to be coming from the top right, which is sort of my go to. So I'm going to knock that in. And because I'm using the layer mask, I can kind of go back and forth on it a little. So let's see. Yeah, I, I, well, I didn't drop the opacity, but you could do that. Um, I just put a white layer in between my flats, which are at full opacity, and my shading, and that way I can just dial that layer. And yeah, I could just also just drop the transparency of my flats folder, and that would do the exact same thing. Um, but this is just this is just like one of my ways of doing it it's j and and I've, ha I've had this question on some of the previous nights um, I'm using gray right now um, it, the shadows will not stay gray this is I, I do not care what color the shadows are right now all I care about is the form of them and then I will adjust the color accordingly when I decide what color the scene is going to be and again, uh, for anybody who um, is curious, I'm going to put everything about this this file, nice, neat. Uh, I'll label everything, and I'll put it up on Gumroad, and you guys can um, have access to it um, and deconstruct it at your leisure. have the hardest time with lighting this is nice any tips for bounce light yep that's coming up so I stick with just direct light for a little while I'm not gonna worry about any other lights um, big part of my process is breaking it up into smaller chunks just so the whole how do you eat an elephant uh, thing I can't do everything at one at once like some of these killer artists can do so I concentrate on one thing at a time right now I'm only care all I care about is light logic I don't care about the color I don't care about anything all I care about is what the actual logic is sometimes when the selection starts to get a little too um, sharp I take the blur tool and I just calm it down just kind of as things disappear dissipate just calm them down not everywhere so having some of those sharper shadows is nice The big thing I like to do is look for opportunities to cast a shadow, and that's coming up with this mouth. Okay, so for the teeth, first thing I'll do is sort of like the global lighting, and what I do is I first make a selection for like the overall lighting. And I don't go fully opaque with it, but I'm gonna just sort of ghost in a little bit of, you can see just those planes from that selection really start to help. But then what I'll do is I'll, I'll remove a little bit of the selection by doing an alt selection. I'll hide that and I'll start working in a bit more. It starts to make it look a little bit faceted. And then it needs cast shadow from the lip. So the lip is casting over it, and then it follows that form. And those facets kind of tell me which direction the teeth are. You see, like, 
little bit of painting over that is creating a bit of a shadow. And then I'll use the teeth, but invert it. And I'll drop their shadow underneath. Suddenly you start to see a lot of volume. Having things cast shadows across themselves or across different forms really adds to the whole illusion of depth. So like right there, I screwed up. I didn't have the um, the selection just right. So I'll use the fingertip, and I'm just gonna pull that over. It's basically just the smudge tool from Photoshop. There's always a way out of your problems. I make a lot of mistakes. I have come up with all kinds of ways to fix my work. Starting to look plump. It's always my goal. This plump alien. Is that shadow layer going to be like a multiply layer? It already is a multiply layer. Um, it's set to multiply right now. Um, it's just gray on top of the flats, and the flats are obscured by a slightly. Um, slightly. Oh, what am I trying to say? The, there's a white layer in between them. It's just a little bit um, lower opacity so I can see through it, but I don't see the flats completely. This whole like making selections over and over, you know, it, it's hard to do in front of people. It's kind of boring, um, but on your own when you don't really have anybody paying attention to how long some of this stuff takes, it's really fun. Um, and at first I was I was doing everything I could to save my selections, create channels out of them, all kinds of things, um, and then I just kind of got into this mantra where I was like, nope. I've got to just be able to redo the selection if I screwed up. And that doesn't always serve me very well, but it's, uh, it's my challenge to myself. And I just not care. Yeah, me good. Thank you very much for coming by. Um, the The videos will all be recorded and everything's still available. So I appreciate you sticking with us as long as you could. I know it's Sunday night, so people peel off whenever they have to. All you guys, I really appreciate you hanging out with me tonight. All right, so he's pretty good. And then I'm going to put in some of the more solid shadows. Like I know the inside of his suit is dark. So, go ahead and chisel that out. And he's going to cast a shadow on the back of his suit over here. So from there down, it's all in shadow. Once the shadows, once you start seeing forms affect other forms with shadows, then the whole thing starts to starts to make sense and I think the math of doing shadows starts to become a little bit easier. When you're first starting your shadow passes and you don't know quite where things are going, it can be a little bit ominous. 
but once you kind of have a general idea, things start making sense. Have I saved? <laughs> Sean, thank you very much, man. <laughs> I have the save recoveries going on all the time, but let me save my own file. That's a, that's a smart man, that Sean Bryant. Do you have set work time of day that works for you, day or night? Do you stick to a time schedule? Uh, yes and no. Um, since I've gone out on my own, um, one of the things I want to I wanted, I've always wanted to try is just working whenever I want to work. Um, I do primarily work at night, um, but if there's something I really have an itch to work on, I'll work on it during the day, and. That's, I, I consider that a positive. If I want to work on something, then I will, I'll take that time. And I feel like that's still, you know, like healthy for me. Um, you know, I'm, I'm like, all, I'm like a, every artist that you're going to meet. I've done some pretty unhealthy habits to myself where I've overworked myself and I'm just trying to get away from that. So I try and work when I want to work, but I do give myself a certain number of hours that I have to work during the day. So I have to put my eight to 10 hours in every day. I get to just choose when it's gonna be. And most of the time that's at night because I really do wanna hang out with my kids as much as possible or my wife if she's free. And that is always worth every second. But yeah, I, I'm just trying this out. You have to check back with me to see if it actually worked out. But I think I'm happier just working whenever, more like when I was a kid. Whenever the mood struck, as they say. Uh, let's see. Looks like I'm a little caught up. have a regular sleep schedule with that. Uh, I go to bed at three. <laughs> uh, I go to bed at three o'clock in the morning um, and then I wake up at nine and that seems to be doing pretty good. It's very quiet at night. One of the things that I had a hard time with having a desk job was um, they were kind enough to get us this beautiful office with these big windows <laughs> but the downside was I could always see when it was beautiful out and gorgeous, you know, and the birds were singing and the animals running around. <laughs> it's like, I'm not supposed to be in an office right now. So, um, yeah, that was always a little problematic, even though I think that they were trying to do a nice thing. Once you kind of lay in some of these forms, you can start to cast out a shadow and then you don't even have to worry about rendering it because it's all in shadow. It's always a nice thing. There's nothing, nothing worse for me than rendering something out and then finding out that something cast a shadow over and I've got to obliterate it.
How do you do it when you have some work with a deadline and the mood never strikes? Um, yeah, that's the plight of every artist. I don't think that there's a, I think you just have to hold yourself accountable. Um, I, I, I wish there was, you know, I wish there was a, I wish there was a way to say, you know, hey, don't worry about it. There's this technique you use, this sort of like meditation you use to, to get yourself in the mood to do freelance work or to do a client's work or something like that. But that's not, that's just not the case. Um, if the mood doesn't strike and you want to be a professional, you gotta, you gotta take your lumps. You know, you agree to it, and you just gotta go for it. I, I wish, I wish I had something to answer that better than that because. I, I am the same way. I, I don't always have have it in me to be working on something that I don't want to be working on. Um, but you, you know, you, you've got to be professional about your what you've committed to. If you don't like doing that, nobody's forcing you to. That's a that's like a dad answer right there. I'm sorry. I am a dad. Oh, there will be a rad galaxy behind him. There'll be a quick and dirty rad galaxy behind him. But there will be a rad galaxy behind him. Deserves that. Getting there, we're almost done with the shading, I think. Then it starts to become tricks. Well, not all tricks, but tricks. Thanks, Kelly. No problem. I'm, I'm, I, I wish I could explain to you how thrilled I am to be able to do these with you guys. I just, you know, we're all cooped up. We're all going through some weird stuff right now and hanging out with you guys and answering questions. It's awesome. You know, I wish we could all be doing it in person, but this is definitely helping out. The fact that you guys are showing up to just listen to me and watch me paint aliens is awesome. I'm not really paying attention to the lights because I'm going to just remove those to the, from the, I don't really care about the shading on the lights themselves, so they're going to look like garbage for a little while and you guys are just going to have to put up with it. listening to music right now. I wish I could. I was afraid it was going to record. My wife made fun of me the other night. I put my headphones on by habit and then I don't take them off. I don't think I have anything going on right now. <laughs> Just my head.
was a weird answer too. I said, I don't think I have anything going on. Like, I don't know. I don't have anything going on right now. I guess I have to call the cops on me. Tell them they're going crazy. Can't even tell what's going on in my own head. Man. You always seem to choose a lighting direction that enhances the shapes of your designs. Any tip on that? Um, I do look for the ability to cast a shadow over another form. Um, and I do that even in concepts, straight up concepts. I, I, try, I, um, I try to find the angle that is going to have a shadow cast across another form um, because it sets the depth. Um, it, it shows how far a form is away from another form. It shows the contour, the cross contour of those forms. So I do very consciously look for those opportunities um, wherever I can. And then I've just sort of learned to like it. I, I, it's not necessarily a better, a better piece because of it. I just enjoy doing it. I like casting shadows over tops of other shadows. I think it's fun. Did you have a favorite animated show growing up? Any current ones today? When I was growing up, I was a Transformers geek. I watched G1 religiously, G.I. Joe. Um, that was when I was growing up. I fell in love with animation and all things commercial art when I saw Eon Flux for the first time. Uh, so Peter Chung has become a, a big, uh, he's always been a uh, big influence on me as far as pushing boundaries and things like that. Um, and I used to watch um, Wizards all the time and Appleseed and Ghost in the Shell, all that stuff. I just couldn't get enough of it. Akira, obviously. Uh, that was, oh, I just added a bunch of groups for no reason. Hold on. There we go. Um, And now I look for really quirky stuff. I really like Sylvan Chomet's work, you know, Triplets of Belleville, and um, yeah, I, I think I screwed something up. Hold on a second. So yeah, uh, growing up, I think it was like the '80s classics. My brother and I would sit and watch GI Joe and. Transformers every day after school. Um, I grew up in the 80s. So, I you know. had all those influences. Thundercats is one of my favorites. Robotech. And I loved Voltron. Still love Voltron. Just started watching it again. All right. So we're gonna call that the shading. If I was um, if I was alone and nobody was watching, I'd probably just keep noodling the thing. But I think we can I think we can call it here for the shading. So the next thing that I'm gonna do. Twenty four hour GI Joe stream. <laughs> well, let's just stop drawing and go watch that. All right. So I'm gonna colorize my shadow. In order, and so to do that the way I normally do it is I turn that ghost layer back off and now I can see for the first time what my shadows look like on my fully opaque um, or not my, my fully um, detailed out that's not even the right way to say it my flats just that they're full opacity right so on off right so now you can see like some of the darker areas where the shadows are getting really dark I wouldn't have been able to see um, just how dark I want I was able to go had I not ghosted that layer down a little bit. Uh, but now I can start to see the whole thing come together. So what I'm gonna do is I have it still set to multiply. I'm gonna pick some garish dark red. It's not gonna be the first color I choose, but I'm just, I need it to be bright. And because it's in space, this would totally work. Um, but I usually 
I usually go for more of a cool color. It's not quite as distracting, but it really depends on the vibe that you wanna that you wanna use. Um, so I'm I got this color. So now I leave it fully saturated. This is how I do my colors. Um, I leave it really saturated, and I find the actual hue that I want to use first. So I usually tend to work into the purples for my shadows. Yeah, somewhere around there. And then I drop my saturation way down. Not all the way down, but way down. And that's that's about where I'm going to land it. Okay, so you can see like in these cream colors that uh, the purple and the cream work really well together. And I, I just think that that is a nice balance. Um, so now I've got that. So now I want to put, especially because there's a lot of metals I want to, uh, and the skins, I want to put a core shadow in. So in order to do a core shadow, which is basically the darkening that happens right when a shadow turns across its edge, um, I'm going to fill this with black and I'm going to link it. Just like you do in Photoshop, you can layer link. I'm going to link it by using these two ellipses down to the shadow layer. And then I'm going to put a mask on that and I'm going to invert it so you can't see anything. So what that's doing is the shadow layer is going to be the only pixels that this core shadow uh, painting can exist on. And now I'm going to slowly start revealing that and you'll start to see some of these. It, it kind of gives the illusion that there's um, like some reflected light going on. So as I just go across some of these edges that are turning, and I always go a little overboard at first because it's easier to back them out. Um, and like, you know, like this cylinder has a core shadow. And I'll just back that off a little bit. Down in the pits here, you know, actually this is a good time to start tackling some of your ambient occlusion where the light can't penetrate any longer. Get in here, just start dropping in some of those darker harder to penetrate areas. Some of these crevices up here. So it's like I'm doing double duty. I'm doing my core shadows and I'm doing my pit shadows. And like right across this lip here. Just a little tiny core. Not a ton of opportunities in this particular piece, but like down behind his neck, there's not a lot of light getting in there. So I'm darkening that top of this vent. Let's get that kind of darkened up. Top of these cylinders. And you, this is this could this could easily turn it into an, an entire lighting paint pass on its own. Um, but we're not going to do that tonight. There's no, no reason to keep you guys watching me noodle or heck ass something when you can get the general idea of how that looks. But it just kind of creates this nice volumetric, turns the shape, really makes it feel a little bit round. Um, okay. Yeah, the power of layers. That's that's where this this is it's pretty much where this is headed. Okay, so now uh, before I forget, I'm gonna load up the lights. Or the lights, lights, and I'm gonna delete that. Okay. The lights aren't gonna receive any of the shadow detail. Uh, not um, in the same way, the way I the way I like to paint them. Okay, and so just like in the last two nights, um, I'm gonna do my uh, my my highlight trick. So what I do is I take my flats, and I duplicate that entire layer, and I'm gonna merge that layer together into one single layer. Okay, and then I'm gonna put that up on top of above my shadows, and for now it's hiding my shadows. Um, I don't need this mask. So I'm going to delete the mask. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set it to add. I like to use add. Some people use overlay and you can see it's really bright. So we'll adjust that in a second. But um, I'm going to load my shadow. Oh, actually, the easiest way to do it is you grab the shadow mask. Now I'm going to put just the add layer that I created into its own little group inside of the shading group. Hold on. Okay, that's set to normal. You got to make sure. Uh, I was supposed to fix it last night. There's a there's a little option for Clip Studio where um, when you create a new group, it will set the layer mode of that group to normal, and you want it to be through, which is like pass through in Photoshop. Otherwise, the layer modes inside of it will be um, set to normal. Anyway, so now I have a folder of my flats, um, and they're set to add. I'm going to load the selection or drag the, the mask from 
the shadow layer up over the highlights here that I'm going to be doing. I'm going to invert it. Nope. Not like that. Why did that not work? Oh, because I had a selection loaded too. Everybody erase their memories for a second. We're going to do that over. All right. We're back to square one. So we've got my shadow layer. <laughs> I'm going to take that layer and I'm going to put that up here and I'm going to invert it. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> so now it immediately makes everything pop. But that's not the way we're going to use this thing. Okay. So what I want to do, so it's what it's doing is it's obscuring anything that's shadow and it's use, allowing the add layer to pop in anywhere like where we still have um, light volume. Um, and because it's going really bright, I do want to calm this down a little bit. So I'm just going to use a hue sat. I'm just going to darken it a little bit and just get a little bit more color. And now I'm going to put a mask on top of that and I'm going to hide it or I'm going to, um, you know, fill the mask with black. And this is where things start to kind of happen quick. So now I just slowly start wiping in highlights. And the nice trick about that, and now it's not accurate by any means, but what's nice about it is it gets you a little bit of the underlying color really, really quickly. And that way, like your highlights aren't just one note. And I really like that. It can get pretty garish if you do it too much. in some reflected light on metals. You can see how kind of nice and quick this can kind of start to come together, especially when your client's begging you to have the piece done. <laughs> so this is not the final highlights layer. This is the this is sort of like my under highlights layer. And what I do is I, I use a soft brush and I kind of like block in my highlights at first. And then I'll go back and kind of refine them with some tighter brushes and add kind of like the smaller ones in. So now I can, you know, I can go and use some tighter brushes and go across some of the scribe marks and add some little highlights. from Smith's Jam. Yep. And I really like working with screwed up metal because then your highlights can be just chunky and messed up. I think they have a lot more story to them than really really clean stuff. I like them both but I think I prefer screwed up stuff. It's more fun for me. And you can chisel back out. Now the thing about highlights, and I've said you know again I'm I'm gonna repeat myself a little bit, but the thing about highlights is they're picking up a lot of the surface details. So if there are scratches in it, this is a great opportunity to start going back and kind of messing that up, messing those those nice clean highlights up and letting all the little chips that have hit him as he's moving through space start to show through. That starts to tell the story a little bit and the, sh the highlights don't look quite so airbrushy. He might, on him, he might have few pock marks, so, you know, skin texture type thing. So I might stipple a little bit, kind of give him some life. You can just add subtract.
So that's the first highlight pass that kind of like gets the ball rolling. And then just above that, um, that folder, I'll just, I'll put another add layer above it. Um, and I'm just going to straight paint. I'm not, this isn't, um, there's no trickery involved. It's just I start adding things in. So a nice highlight on his eye. It's a little bit wet. So with some of the sharper highlights, I'll just go through and just kind of garishly go through and put them and I'm going to knock them back in a minute. Cliff wants to do an auto save. Hold on a second here. Is there plans to do further creature box books? There's always plans to do that. Time permitting. They are. They are always fun to make. They are a lot of work to make. <laughs> All right. So now I've got these sharpened up. I can go through and. Soften some of the edges and just blur them. I actually use the airbrush to calm them down just ever so slightly. And not over the top. Now he's going to have a big glass dome on, so we do want them a little over the top because they're going to get obscured and we want to compensate for that. All right, so let's. What do you think? You want to do the glass dome or you want to do the reflective? Let's do the glass dome now. Okay, so in the flats we had this glass dome. And put that on. I think we'll go slightly warmer green. Yeah, I think that looks better. And we'll go a little bit more transparent with it. There we go. All right, so this is gonna get kind of like its own shading pass because I, I really do treat glass as something separate. So as the, as the glass turns away from us, it, it starts to get thicker. It's it a little darker. That's the first step to pulling glass off. Okay. The next step is to figure out the general reflection. The way I usually do reflections on these is um, I'm going to set the layer to sort of an add layer and I'm going to pick kind of a bright color and I'm going to just use the airbrush and I'm going to what's going on there? That's not quite right. Hold on a second. Let's do that up in the post layer. That's why. Right? There we go. So up in post, that's above the inks and things like that. So it looks terrible right now, and that's on purpose. OK, so that's the sky. Now we have to figure out what the mountains look like that he's reflecting into. So he's on an alien landscape, and just do some alien shapes. Real happy with where he is. And then around the edges as a sort of gets away from his front view, soften that up. And then I'm going to blur the crud out of this. And I'm going to drop the opacity down. About like that. And that's our that's a reflection for the landscape that he's in. And you can, depending upon what you're trying to say, sometimes you want to make that that reflection really opaque. Sometimes you want to make it a little bit more transparent. Uh, because I really want the alien to show up, I'm going to leave that more transparent. Now I'm going to add the highlight in for the glass. Bottom of that. 
boy. We're about to see something. Nope. There we go. Okay, we're back. Okay, so we got our highlight, and then there'll be a few other reflections just because it's glass. And these are. They're a bit more uh, subjective. You know, you just figure out some glares and things like that. And you can either use a soft brush or you can blur those down. You don't have to blur them. Some of these reflections technically should be really sharp, but for what we're doing, I think I wanna keep them blurry. And then I'm gonna put one kind of across this, this glass here. So I'll make a selection. Something's going over the top of them. Okay, it's starting to look like it's glass. So that area down there is going to get a little bit of a reflection from his suit. So we'll sample a little of that. This suit in there, suit there, clear that out, and erase it out a little. So that just indicates that like some of that, some of that suit is showing up in the reflection of the glass a little bit. Okay, and then uh, why don't we throw a background in and then we can do the lights and that guy, and then we'll do the color of the line work and I think we'll be in the home stretch. So I've been doing these stripes, uh, something that you've probably seen me do a ton of times. So I'm just going to fill that with some galaxy like color. That's okay. All right, so let's make that more blue. No, let's go. Yeah, let's go purple. And then I'm gonna lock that. We'll get a little galaxy going on back here. I'm not gonna go nuts galaxy, but I'm gonna go galaxy. It's a nice 80s gradient. stars need to pop right and Andrea do you think it's possible to pursue Oh, can I, let's start with Steven. Can I ask why you, did you leave Pasadena and move to the mountains? I live very close to Pasadena. Uh, it's cheaper here. <laughs> no, uh, Insomniac was opening a sister studio in North Carolina. It's a big tech hub. 
um, and they wanted us to come out and sort of help set up the studio and um, it was a Ratchet and Clank project so I definitely wanted to come along and, and, and work on that so it was a great opportunity plus it's a great place to let my kids grow up and, and have a backyard and all this stuff so it was reluctant but at the same time it was a really good move for us all right, so I'm gonna do a little illustration-y kind of thing here where I'm just gonna put a little glow around him. And then we're gonna get back into the actual illustration. Oh, sorry, uh, Andrea, do you think it's possible to have, pursue two careers as a concept artist? Well, what would the second one be? Because, or do you just wanna be a concept artist in two places? <laughs> no. Make sure I get your question just right. This is my little. Uh, Philip, I, um, I often do go to Photoshop, but tonight I'm just gonna stay in Clip because I can pretty much do most of what I do anyway. So no big deal. Uh, voice acting. Oh, I'll get back to you, Casper, in just a second. Voice acting and concept. Uh, I think it's possible. And I think you just have to be able to strike that balance. I, I don't do another thing, so I may be the wrong person to ask. Um, but, um, you know, if you're good at drawing, you're good at drawing, you're gonna be able to, you're gonna be able to do both. All right, so I'm gonna do the, I'm gonna do the lights. I'm gonna keep that in the post set up here. I'll do those in a separate add layer. So I'm gonna shift select the lights, boom. And we'll start glowing those up a little. I feel like, just to keep on with that voice acting thing, I, I, this is a completely uneducated answer, but I feel like voice acting is something that is disparate enough and possibly even schedule wise so different that I think it's something that you could probably balance off easier than say, you know, if you were trying to do a comic book work and concept art at the same time. That's that's definitely possible as well, but it's, you know, they eat into each other's time in a different way. All right, so I got that. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of glow using that same color just to kind of get reaction from those lights and I'm just pretending that there's one over here uh, if I had tons of time I'd probably do some sort of like UI graphic on each one of these lights kind of make them a bit more techy looking but not tonight uh, what's next okay so the next thing I'm gonna do is the kick light so I'm gonna go back into my shading layer and this is gonna look this is gonna look a little crazy at first, but it'll come together. So again, I pick a, a really garish color. Um, I know that my kick light should be one of these purples, these purpley red colors. So I'm gonna fill a layer with that color, um, and then I'm gonna set that to add. Okay, and then I'm going to um, mask that just like I always do. And I'm gonna slowly just start working in some kick light. It's a little, little reflected light, just revealing that stuff. So I think, I always think that this like little bit of reflected light, especially in the shadow masses that have become a little bit flat, goes a long way to kind of help re-round out those forms. And it's a really garish color right now. Um, I'm gonna go back in and, and make an adjustment to that, but I don't do it right away because if it's a nice bright color, I can see my paint a little easier. And because I'm not working the way some people work where they are trying to get that final color right away, I'm actually just looking at where the pixels go.
So, and this is this is a personal choice. This kick light, like you could definitely leave it really garish and bright, and and have it look pretty cool, or you can calm it down like I'm gonna do. And I've started to do pieces where I actually paint an entire separate shadow layer rather than just kind of like artificially adding this kick light in. Um, and that's just like basically doing the shadow layer, layer twice or the lighting pass twice because you have, you're basically doing light logic two different times and then you combine them together. All right, so I'm gonna kind of tweak that color a little bit. I'll drop the saturation a little bit, brighten it up. There we go, that looks good. And then I wanna do the same thing on the glass. So I'm gonna load the glass and I'm gonna go back up into my post layer. I'm going to use that same general color and just ever so slightly bring a little of that purple into the edge. I think. What am I doing wrong? Purple, post, oh, it's set to normal, add. And I'm using this. <laughs> so always something I'm doing wrong. Okay, there we go. Now we're back into this. So just a little bit of that purple light. Reflecting into the glass. And I can actually go in and put a few of the stars reflecting in his glass. This as well. Kind of tie him in. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back down to my ink layer. And I'm going to just Mostly on the areas that are in the highlight area, I just want to calm them down by kind of like using some color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a layer above the link layer, above the um, the line work. The line work is basically just black ink um, transparency. Uh, I'm going to link it down over it, and I'm just going to paint straight into it. And because it's linked down over the inks, it's not going to leave the inks. So. see like as I start to wipe in that color the glass in particular it's gonna look pretty cool so like on these these areas where it's a little brighter just ever so slightly calm it down the light work line work some people paint their paintings to completely obscure the line work in the end and I think that can look really rad um, but I'm kind of a, a line work nut and I spent enough time on it maybe become just a smidge precious to me so I'm gonna keep it uh, let's see I think it's nice to make these choices and I think that's gonna be it there's our alien Explorer for tonight hit save And then answer questions. It's 120, so we went over by quite a bit. <laughs> um, but what do you think? You guys have any questions? You guys want me to talk through anything? You want to hang out? Talk about sports, which I have no idea about. Yeah, the kick light, Sean. The kick light is a secondary light source. Um, if you do a tight little rim light, it's really just like tracing the contour and the back of the shape. You're not really doing a ton of light work, uh, light, uh, you know, light logic. It's just kind of like an illustrative trick. Um, it's, you know, and, and that's really what a lot of this stuff comes down to is like, it's not always, like you have to do enough stuff that's believable and then you do your tricks. Oh, Casper, yeah, I'm sorry. How do you market yourself as an artist? Um, it's really, unfortunately, it's become Instagram and Facebook. You have to, you have to just go nuts. You gotta be, um, you know, hitting the hashtags and, um, you know, showing the work. That's and LinkedIn has helped a little bit. Um, having a website, 
you know, all the really basic stuff, but you know, Instagram, everyone's finding everyone on Instagram now. And I kind of hate that, but at the same time, it's become really fun platform and the audience has been really helpful to me and supportive. So there's a lot of really great stuff with it as well. Um, but there's not really an easy way to, to market yourself as much as just kind of like constantly making pieces. Um, and then a good challenge to take on is if you want to do concept work, if you want, it's not really about just doing a piece like this. It's about like showing your process of going from silhouettes to uh, color studies to final, like how you're solving that problem. Show um, as much publicly about your workflow and about your thought process. And that way people start to get in their head that you're actually not just doing sweet final illustrations, but you're, you're actually kind of like process driven and you're actually thinking about problems and trying to solve those problems. Hope that helps a little bit. Let's see. Oh, I like all the compliments. That's awesome. Who would win predator versus venom? Uh, Venom, comic book Venom, not the movie Venom. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't read any comics with Predator in it. I'm sure they've took, taken some liberties. He's a badass, but I, I think he'd get taken. Is it always necessary to relocate for contracts? No. Uh, in fact, actually, my entire new life revolves around not moving anymore and just taking on contracts. You don't have to... I, I feel like I could live in Antarctica right now and I'd be able to keep working as long as I had an internet connection. Um, your layers are so clean. Thank you very much. That took, that took actual, like I, I'm a messy person. Um, it, you know, it's a conscious effort to keep things clean, but it definitely saves you in the end. Uh, let's see. So not no, so NR, it's not necessary to re relocate for contracts. Unless you're going to be in-house, a lot of times that's a big deal. Andrea, you're very welcome. I'm glad we got to answer a few questions. Thanks for about the colors. Very happy to share. Very happy that you guys showed up. Do you have posts lined up beforehand in order to keep traction going for your Instagram? Sometimes. Um, I think I'm like anybody, though. Once I finish something, I want to show everyone. So I, um, I usually um, can't go for very long hiding a piece from the public. <laughs> I get my endorphin rush as soon as possible. I'm glad you guys had fun at Lightbox, Kyle, Kylie. That's awesome. I'm glad you got something out of it. It was a, it was a really cool solution to a tough problem. I think Bobby did an awesome job with that. I'm glad it wasn't boring. Let's see. Please keep making live streams. All right. You know, I was scared to do them, but after these three and you guys all showing up for them, it's been a lot more fun than I thought it was going to be, so I definitely will keep going. How come you stop signing your digital work? I don't know. I don't really have an answer for that. I just never really even thought about it until you just asked that question. <laughs> uh, what was, what's my favorite piece? So Zaina, I'm gonna make you rewrite into the chat. What do you mean? Is it my favorite piece? Favorite piece in the world? Favorite piece from the weekend? I need just a smidge more specificity because I have a lot of favorite pieces. Thanks for adding the Rad Galaxy. You're absolutely right. welcome, Kylie. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much, Christian. Daniel Delgado, great. Thank you very much, I really appreciate it. Michael, do you ever spend time doing any analog work anymore? Yep. And actually, I think this fall, I'm going to commit to doing a lot more traditional work just because I, I really need it. Uh, it it's, it's nice to round out and sometimes you do things digitally that you can bring to your traditional work and vice versa. So I think it's good to go back and forth. Sean, could you talk a bit about your book creation process? Do you guys just compile work or is it more planned out? Um, I think what we do for the books traditionally, and what I just did for the book that I have in my shop right now that's under Lost Bear, um, is um, I put together the pieces that we have. Um, a lot of times there is somewhat of an underlying theme, but not, not a very direct theme. Um, and then where the holes are, that's when it's time to start. Like, you know, we look for a vibe, a theme, um, and then even with um, some of the stuff that I'm doing through Lost Bear, we. Um, we try to kind of like theme it, whether it's going to be like some like 1950s, like comic book or something like that. And then 
where the holes are in the book, that's when we start adding pieces that are a bit more specific to that theme. So it's, it's a bit of a cart before the horse at the beginning, but then once there, once we kind of see what's missing and what's going to help kind of glue the whole thing together, that, that stuff is a bit more specific to the book itself. Uh, how do you describe which area of concept art to go for? I feel like the more time I spend on one thing, I get better at it, but the risk of loss of mastery of another thing. Yep. <laughs> yes, uh, that is absolutely the case. You only have so many hours in a day and you have to spend as much time as you can learning as much as you can. Um, how do I decide? Um, it's what I'm passionate about. I think if you're passionate about it, you're going to do a better job. You're going to learn faster. So I... I think you have to follow your passions. Okay, Let's see, so NR says that's something that I always worried about because I don't think I could afford to move to a place like Pasadena. Yeah, nobody can. <laughs> uh, Bucks team is awesome. They are. Cameron, so cool to see your workflow. Thanks for streaming. My pleasure. Thanks for showing up. It means the world. Firepower design, so cool. Thanks so much. Oh. That's awesome. Thank you very much. Oh, I'm glad you subscribed too. I'll keep making these things so you guys can keep hanging out with me. I, I definitely need this. Punky a go go. Yeah, it definitely saves time. I'll almost certainly be implementing some of the stuff I learned from here in my art. That's awesome. That's really good to hear. And if you guys are using some of these techniques or anything like that and you want to show, tag me, I'd love to, uh, or message me, you know, um, show me what you guys are working on. I'd love to see it. Uh, something that I've created, my favorite pieces. Um, yeah, if, I don't know if you were here at the beginning. You know, I, I don't think I like any of my pieces. I, I actually did save a couple of my Inktober's, um, mostly because my kids responded positively to them. So I think those became pieces that I really like. Um, and then, but my real favorite pieces are some life drawings I did of my of my dogs as puppies and things like that. And those I really hold dear. So it's more personal stuff. Um, would you would love to watch you live stream more? Okay, I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to be getting the feedback because if you guys like this stuff, I'm definitely going to be doing more. Do I like making environments? I like learning to make environments. I'm definitely on the path to learning how to draw better environments. Every time I they are they are a beast unto themselves. Um, so I'm Sebastian. I'm I'm definitely uh, trying to learn more about them. Um, I working in video games for as long as I did, I did a fair amount of um, environment concepts, but because a lot of the environments are composed of individual pieces, we treated a lot of the elements like characters rather than doing these big broad scope things. And that was kind of unique to Insomniac. And um, so I, I got a little, I got a little weak in the environment. I definitely need to brush up on that and keep working with that. Uh, will your one mindless sketchbook be sold digitally? I don't know if I sell out of them, I might do that, um, but I, I don't know. It was it was something I put together for the show, and I hope everybody can check it out. Um, you know, kind of shameless plug. I've got some, I've got some stuff in the in the shop. Um, so uh, if you go to lostbear.com and go into the shop and check it out, I got stickers and books and things like that that I made for the show. Maybe uh, new to your work? Just followed how the creature box instigates such a following online. Uh, it's like 15 years old and we just stayed at it posting two three times a week consistently we just hustled man that's it i draw i wish i wish there was like something that we paid for we would have done that but now it was just a hustle fernando i hope the light box continues to have this online part it's very useful yeah i like it a lot as well um i, th I think this is going to be a big part of the future of all conventions casper wants to know this has been Three fun and extremely helpful sessions. Thank you so much for answering my questions and sharing your magic. Casper, thank you much for the support all these years and coming out these three nights and hanging out. It's awesome, man. You've been great. Sean, that's cool. A bit of column A and a bit of column B. I usually start with the theme, then hammer in it until I hate it. Yeah, I know. I know. I, I can say that if I'm starting with a theme, <laughs> I do the exact same thing. I get burnt on it. So it's nice to start with something and then try and fix it. I think I do a lot better job when I'm trying to fix a problem and pull something off than when I'm just trying to, like, it, you know, coming up with an idea and then uh, trying to make something from scratch. I usually end up hating it too. So I, I don't know. I think I just do better 
trying to like shoehorn something at the end. Uh, Tyra Lee, thanks for his streams. My pleasure. Hopefully I'll do more and you guys can keep showing up. Fleet Vargas, totally. I will never be able to go to Lightbox if it's not online. Yeah. Well, for all the effort that they put into this, I can't imagine them abandoning it. You're welcome, Isabel. You're welcome, Kylie. Or, oh, oh, Kylie. <laughs> okay, Matthew Williams. Thank you so much, Greg. It's been great. We're connected again. After so much distance last six months, you've been amazing. Oh, good. That's awesome. That's all we do this stuff for is to get everybody drawing. My hope is that every one of you guys is making stuff that I can drool over in the next few months and the next few years. Uh, I just have tons and tons of artwork to absorb. Thank you. It was cool. So thank you, Andrea, Isabel. Thank you very much. Really enjoy all the light box sessions. Yep. Good. It was awesome. So I'll, yeah, I'll definitely keep doing the live streams. Uh, traditional art streams. Yeah, I got a, I got about half the equipment I need to get set up. I got to get my drafting table reset up. It's been taken over by all the merch that I created. Um, but once I clear that off, I can start setting up for doing traditional streams. Um, yep. Magdalena. Nice. I want to follow that path. Show us some of the environments. Soon as your best convenience. Okay. Uh, following on Instagram, be sure to spread the word. Cool. That's awesome. Um, yeah. Follow me on Instagram. That's where I'm the most active. If you go to Lost Bear Studios on Instagram, I'm definitely the most active there and definitely subscribe to the channel here. Um, I'm really liking being on YouTube, so I want to do more of this. So thanks everybody. I'm gonna jump down and look through some specific questions, but sleep and dumplings, thanks very much. I draw. Tell us about the cutout skull on your gum road. That is sick. Oh I got one right here. You guys, this was um we did a skull challenge in July. Yep. Let's see. Gotta make sure I get this in, in camera. Um we did a skull challenge where I had to draw a skull every day, and I think about halfway through, people were starting to get bored. So I um, I did this paper model, and you can go to Gumroad, download it, glue it together, and get yourself your own little skull. So I'm going to talk to you in these lonely days. So yeah, it was fun to build. It was like modeling back on the PS2. Um, no problem, double colored. I'm glad I could answer some questions. Jake, do you think it's possible to be a successful artist these days without a strong social media presence? Uh, yes, I don't. Um, I think as long as you team up with a, you know, that's a tricky question. Yes, success then has to be defined a little bit differently. Does it mean like you're getting paid well? Well, then you're, you know, you're just gonna need, you're gonna need to find a company that's, you know, that you're working with pretty regularly so that you're making the money. If that's what you consider success, if you consider success following, then obviously social media matters. If it, you mean just the quality of your work, it has nothing to do with either one of those things. It's all about just uh, pushing yourself. Uh, Groshok, do you always color value on white background? No, and actually this is the second night I forgot to do it. I usually color on a medium gray so that I don't um, screw up my values. I got lucky, I didn't have too much trouble tonight, but yeah, if I paint on a medium gray, it's it's always a little bit more um, accurate as far as color picking. And then I can switch to whatever I want. Mr. Edward Schofield, thank you very much, man. Thanks for coming out, thanks for watching through. Miss you, man. I can't wait to hang out soon. Kylie Gary, laugh my name. Name twin spotted out in the wild. I don't know what that means, but it was cool. Uh, how can we tag you in social media? Uh, most of it is Lost Bear Studios, all one word. If you're on Instagram or I think I have a Facebook page um, and on YouTube, it's, it's usually just all one word, Lost Bear Studios. Uh, and Ordinary Ram, thank you, no problem. Catherine Monroe, I love doing panels online, but want a physical artist alley to walk through around? Yes, agreed, let's do both. Let's all just stay put, get healthy, and then start doing cool conventions again. Uh, Nikolai says, thanks for the great stream. Love the techniques, that's cool. I'm glad you guys are gonna be able to get something out of this. Ancon, good night, thanks. Thank you very much. Kim, you are also dope. Okay, go, go. Cool, cool, cool. 
dying in style name the skill wilson yeah that is probably the most appropriate name he's definitely keeping me that kind of company right now gecko gunner thank you for the insight wisdom and fun and thank you for the hard work in the game industry oh my pleasure <laughs> i did the work in the game industry for the money don't let it, don't let anybody tell you different uh mechanic how big is your art book collection um I'm starting to have to thin it down, but it makes the shelves bend a little bit. So um, yeah, it's uh, it's immense. I love collecting art books, and and my wife and I also collect art books from traditional artists as well, like big, uh, fine art painters. So the house is just covered with books. Um, which site is good to put up a portfolio? Um, I think ArtStation is kind of the front runner right now, right? I think uh, ArtStation and um, Password protection, I don't know how that stuff works, um, but I think if you're worried about people taking your stuff, um, you're gonna have to be a bit more choosy. Um, so, but I would I would focus, if you're trying to get a portfolio up, I would focus on trying to make as much stuff um, that you can show publicly as often as possible because you really need to get in front of people who aren't willing to go through the trouble of unlocking websites. I draw. Thank you for everything. Congrats on being able to sustain your art. Thanks. Well, you guys are helping. So big thanks to you guys as well. Um, I really appreciate you guys coming out. Ace, I kind of feel sad that this is the last few minutes of my box. <laughs> yeah, I know. The end of the show is always the saddest. It's like the whole next week you're just in denial. Sebastian Sierra. Thanks. Have a great night. I hope you have a great night. And thanks again for coming out. Kim, I hope I could meet you in person one day. Yep. Once we get this whole stupid virus thing sorted out, we're all going to start flying to people's backyards and hanging out. We're going to make up for all this lost time. Uh, Greg Arcula. I can't do your last name, but I can definitely do your first name. Thanks for sharing your process of watching. I'm glad you liked it, man. That's awesome. Sebastian, you go to any convention before? I've been to the first Lightbox. I go to CTN. We do uh, Heroes Con in Charlotte. Uh, we've done Dragon Con, um, and then I'm sure we'll do more in the future, or I'll do more in the future. I don't know. Noah, thanks and good night. I hope you have a good night as well. I draw. Someone sign my yearbook. I'll sign your yearbook. <laughs> Kylie. All right. Cool. All right, I'm going to start to roll off here. I think you guys all need to get some sleep. You're all acting too smooshy. Thanks so much for answering the questions. Wish you and your family good health. Thank you. That means everything. I hope everybody else is staying safe out there, staying healthy, and making art. Um, and yeah, I do. I will definitely. I'll be the one screeching past you with my, my music blaring. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna take off. It was really great. I really appreciate it. I will get this all posted up. I'll get the PSD posted up as soon as I can. Um, and I hope you guys all have a wonderful. Uh, decompressing week and everybody stay safe.